G'day and welcome to another video of mine. I know I said it was going to be every week, but it's not. I changed the thing to occasionally. So this video is just a list of all the things you'll need to start your own dog grooming salon. Now, obviously, I only suggest this for people who have experienced dog grooming. I wouldn't recommend doing it straight off the bat, but here's a list of things that you need because it took me a while to figure out all the stuff I did and didn't need. So I've made it easy for you and here's the list. I'm doing this voiceover a year after filming this. So, oh, blades. Okay, we're going to start with blades. I use a 10, a 7, a 5, a 4, and a 3. I don't use a 3 quarter HT or a 5 eighths HT. I just use a snap on comb with a 10 underneath it if I want to do a longer length. So, the snap on combs is another thing you're going to need. I use these all the time, like I said, if I want to do a longer length, like this one inch here. I never use these shorter ones. I just use the blade instead because the blade has a much nicer finish. Next, we've got Epiotic, which is the ear cleaner that I use. Clipper oil for making sure that your blades are lubricated. Stip dick powder for when you nick a dog's nail. You just pop this on and it stops the bleeding. You can also use uh, the sticks. I think it's potassium permanganate on the sticks. Regular old cotton wool balls for putting in dog's ears when they're in the bathtub to stop water getting in there. Next up is brushes. I use a slicker and a poodle comb. I think they're also called greyhound combs. I don't know why they're called that. A ferminator for brushing short-coated dogs. Nail clippers, big and small. The small ones are actually cat nail clippers, but I use them on most small dogs. And this little brush is for cleaning the fur out of your blades and your clippers. It comes with your clippers. You can use a toothbrush if you don't have one. Coat Kings, fantastic, but please make sure you know how to use it. I've seen photos of groomers who ripped their hands open using these. <laughs> Another obvious one is you're going to need some scissors. These are my curves. All my other ones were off being sharpened when I filmed this, so these were the only ones that I had in the salon to show you. My recommendation for clippers would be the cordless Heinegger Saphirs. Really, any cordless clipper, as long as it's good quality. Having cordless clippers is fantastic. You don't get caught up in the cord and like restricted in where you can move or like where you can go. You can take these bad boys wherever you want. Now, muscles is an important one. Make sure you have a range of sizes for a range of dogs. If you think you don't need a chihuahua sized muzzle, you would be very wrong. I feel like disinfectant is a little too obvious to put on the list, but like you need disinfectant. Make sure you can disinfect your table and your tools and your blades and everything that you're using. You're going to need poo bags because if you put a raw poo in the bin, unbagged, it's going to stink out your whole shop. Get poo bags. Not a necessity, but a total lifesaver sometimes is a pair of happy hoodies. It comes in large, comes in small. You pop them over the dog's head if they're shaking their ears, you know, due to being shaved off. And it stops them getting oral hematomas. You can also use them for when you're drying dogs if they're, oh my God. Hello, sweetie. Oh my, I forgot all about this video. <laughs> They look so funny. Anyway, what's next? Personal protective equipment. Dryers are really loud and the glasses are great for stopping hair getting in your eyes when you're blow drying out a Samoyed or something and it's snowstorming in the salon. A little fun fact is that my grandma used to call shampoo shampooch if she was using it on the dog. She used to use Pantene on the dog. Don't use Pantene on the dogs. Get some dog shampoo. Now you can use pen and paper to track your sales records, but if you already have a tablet or a phone, you can just chuck Square on it. You can use Square for free if you don't intend on using their payment processing. You can, of course, use their payment processing. I do recommend that for startup businesses because it's pretty cheap. It's only a small percentage of the fee that you're charging the customer. You can set up your dashboard with your most commonly charged amounts like I have. You can add a retail section like I have. It's fantastic. I really recommend Square. For keeping track of bookings, I just used my Apple Calendar. This is what it would look like when it was all set up. I censored out the surnames, but add the surname so you can keep track of which dog is which. You can use pen and paper for this as well, but I just liked, again, using my iPad for everything. I like having everything in one spot. Of course, you're going to need a surface to work on. If you can afford it, I do recommend getting an electric table. It saves your back. You don't have to lift the big dogs onto it. It's great. You're going to need a lot of towels. If you're trying to save money to start with, just ask friends and family if they have any leftovers. Usually they do. Oh my god, it's Heidi! Hello, Heidi! Oh my gosh, I know I filmed this like a year ago, but I actually groomed Heidi just yesterday, so what a crazy coincidence. That I use and recommend is the Pupkiss Laser RX Twin Motor Dryer. You can dry on low power, you can dry on high power, and they're pretty good price for what they are. 
As far as bathtubs go, this is what I had initially. It's a pup kiss bath with the backsplash. It's electric lift. Again, saves you back. You don't have to lift the big dogs up and into it. It's quite spacious. It doesn't look that big, but I fit an Irish wolfhound in here one day. If you don't want to buy a bathtub, you can just do what I used to do and use your human bathtub. It works just as good. Just get a little shower attachment for the nozzle and you're all good. If you're planning on accepting cash, you're going to need a cash box of some sort. It's not very safe or professional to just pull money out of your wallet to give change to your customers. Desk-wise, you don't need much. I do recommend getting a Google for some hands-free music changing. I also have Bluetooth earphones so that I can watch Netflix while I work, and it's great. I watch Critical Role pretty much all day, every day if I'm not watching Netflix. It's great. Hello, sweetheart. How you doing? A Bluetooth keyboard for my iPad. It's just a little bit more helpful, and I do recommend getting even just like a cheap second phone to use as your work-only number. It's nice to be able to turn off the phone when you leave the salon for the day and then not have to stress about answering messages. I changed to a bank-issued FPOS machine when I got sick of Square. Square deposits the next business day, which wasn't that good for me because it meant that when I worked on Fridays and Saturdays, I wouldn't get any of those takings until Monday. So I went and I got um, an FPOS machine through my bank, which is Bank of Melbourne, and it's fantastic. It deposits all your takings that night. This card's pretty self-explanatory. Get them. And finally, if you have the space for it, some retail. Retail is really good. Every sale you make brings your daily sales goal down just a little bit. Treats sell really well, especially these as I have a little tasting platter. You want to be on the video too? This is my dog. His name is Delvin and he's very sweet. And congratulations if you got this far because I think this video is like 10 minutes long or something like that. Thing I forgot was client cards. So somewhere to write down the dog's name, phone number, what you did with it today, any notes like if it was matted or if it had fleas, anything like that. And let's pause for a second. Oh my god, I look fantastic. Here's what my client cards look like. I just made a Google Sheet. It's super easy to do and I just popped in all the information that I would want and then I just save it all on my Google Drive. Apart from that, that's all you need to run your own dog grooming business. It's all laid out nicely on the table for you. And as usual, if you want to contact me, please don't contact my business. Contact me on the Instagram or in the comments because business is for business only. That's all I ask of you. Anyway, I'll see you in another two years for another video.